hello everyone. Oh, I am very happy that you come for my presentation. I hope you don't come just because of the title. <laughs> oh, let me introduce myself uh, really briefly. My name is uh, Miro Michalička and uh, I have about five year experiences uh, with web development. Uh, I started with some E, uh, then I switched uh, to Zend. And three years ago, I started working with Drupal. Uh, now I'm working with uh, Hungarian agency Shepherds. Uh, we have Drupal de department, then some UX, UI, and uh, in the end, we have also uh, DevOps guys. Uh, what am I going to talk about in this presentation? Uh, so in the, on the beginning, I will tell you my personal story with headless Drupal. Then I will continue with some API best practices, and uh, in the end, uh, we will talk about uh, decoupling options in Drupal, and I hope that uh, there will be some discussion uh, where, uh, when we will talk about implementing these best practices into uh, the practical development in Drupal. So, start with uh, decoupling and my personal story. Someone can uh, imagine headless Drupal like this. Uh, my personal story with uh, headless Drupal started uh, maybe two years ago uh, when I started a new job and I was asked to optimize a uh, services module in Drupal 7 because uh, third party provider uh, wasn't able to integrate application with our Drupal e-commerce solution. Uh, then in uh, September last year, just before uh, Drupal 8 beta was about to be released, we, uh, we realized in our community that uh, we need to migrate our community website. And because we didn't have enough Drupal people uh, to do it, uh, I mean like actively participate in development, but we have uh, some volunteers uh, to do front-end work only, we decided to go headless, and it obviously didn't work because uh, uh, Drupal was uh, some level of uh, Drupal knowledge was also required by uh, those people, and they were simply not uh, good enough to do it. And then, after Drupal 8 was released, I started playing with uh, Internet of Things and. Uh, running Drupal 8 on Raspberry Pi, it was quite interesting. So this is my personal story, and uh, now let's get to, uh, what decoupling is. So basically it's uh, when your Drupal application can talk to another Drupal application, to your mobile application, to some other systems. These systems can perform some uh, calculation or communicate with some other systems, and. Uh, then these data are stored back in your Drupal 8. Uh, decoupling has uh, some pros and cons. Uh, for pros, uh, we can say that uh, it's very, it allows you to be very flexible in front-end, and uh, your front-enders will be very happy about it because they can work with up-to-date technologies. Uh, we know that uh, front-end technologies are um, being developed more, fa more faster than we can release Drupal versions. Uh, then it can solve a uh, lack of Drupal specialists. As I said, uh, if you have people who can do some front-end development, but uh, they don't want to learn Dr Drupal, or uh, mm, they simply want to do front-end, uh, it's a great way uh, how you can use them. Then, as I said in on previous image, uh, it allows you to have multi-vendor backend, and if you design your application uh, quite well, it also allows you to use strengths of uh, Drupal back office, uh, which is quite important. Uh, on the other hand, you can lose some Drupal capabilities like caching, which is a really great improvement in Drupal 8, and uh, also some accessibility uh, things. 
Uh, you are also making multiple requests for resources if you have a uh, menu on your website, then some listings, so you have to make separate requests for that, at least with uh, traditional fully decoupled websites. Uh, this might not no longer be issue because we have HTTP2 protocol here, uh, which is basically coupling requests and uh, then browser and web server are uh, are working with them. And the last con is that uh, your teams will probably go bigger because uh, you will need some integration specialists, maybe some front-end engineer who can do more than only teaming and some basic JavaScript. Let's get mm, go to the second part of my presentation, uh, to API best practices. I borrowed this from uh, top tile websites. They are quite skilled uh, with this. Uh, I had some previous experience uh, with building API uh, applications outside of Drupal world. Uh, and I was trying to apply this uh, this knowledge I learned outside Drupal world into Drupal, uh, Drupal 8 especially. Uh, so the first API best practice is uh, documentation. Uh, we are now in age when you can basically, on the beginning of project, uh, briefly scaffold your API, uh, and then you can, from tools like APR or APG, generate uh, classes for your backend developer, some models from uh, your uh, front-end engineers, and they can work separately, and in the end, uh, it's just simply working. If you make any changes in these APIs, they are uh, immediately documented uh, using these tools. I was trying to connect these tools into Drupal. It was uh, unfortunately not very successful because of uh, routing in Drupal 8. Uh, which is a little different for uh, normal controller requests and uh, for API uh, for REST resources. Uh, for basic documentation of Drupal 8 uh, REST resources, we have a self-documenting uh, REST API module, uh, but this module is working only for core uh, resources, so you have, uh, for example, this is a uh, node resource, so you have node uh, type of request, uh, then some authentication method which are enabled, and then a uh, list of parameters. Uh, there is also indicated if these parameters are required or not. Um, the second best practice uh, from my list is scalability and consistency. Uh, if you have ever been working with uh, Facebook API, for example, you know it's not very, uh, very uh, up to date, uh, especially when you're comparing co documentation and then you are really trying to work with it. Uh, there are changes uh, quite often into it. Uh, therefore, versioning is quite important. If we are looking on typical Drupal 8 requests to get some node, I, uh, you basically get entity slash node uh, slash node ID, and you will receive some uh, JSON object, or the just shortened version of what you will really receive. Uh, if you have some custom resource, it might be uh, important for you to version this resource because uh, if I will decide uh, to add new field, uh, for simplicity it's just uh, another array uh, with strings, but imagine that it would be array with uh, serialized images. And you don't necessarily need uh, th this resource in your application, which is powered by older version of API. 
uh, you will be just simply transferring a big amount of data. So from my point of view, it makes sense to have uh, two versions of this resource. Uh, they can be on separate URLs. Uh, and this is, for example, uh, you are able to do this uh, with services in uh, Drupal 7, also with some other modules for Drupal 7, but it's not currently supported by any module for Drupal 8, as far as I know. Uh, regarding consistency, uh, when you are using versioning, you should also make sure that uh, your URLs uh, are consistent. In the first case, I'm using a uh, version as part of the URL. In the second case, I'm using it as a parameter. And uh, it's not very, uh, very good. Uh, if I mean, you can support both, but uh, there shouldn't be case that you are, for one resource, you are supporting one. And for another resource, you are supporting another resource or another version. Now let's talk a little about uh, flexibility. Flexibility is, uh, I think, one uh, one part which is uh, quite well mastered by uh, Drupal, especially Drupal 8. Uh, we support multiple formats. Uh, JSON is by default by uh, res module uh, from core modules. Uh, how JSON is uh, another core module, but not a lot of people, I think, is using it. Uh, XML might be, for example, important when you are working on backend, so uh, you are not using res, but SOAP protocols, for example. Mm, another well-mastered security uh, part of this checklist is security. If you look on uh, what is provided by core, it's cookies and basic authentication. It's uh, the must in these ages. And also you can write your own authentication provider very, very simply. You can generate the whole method by uh, Drupal console, and you just need to implement your business logic in uh, two short methods. Uh, the first one is applies, in which you, uh, you specify when is this uh, method used, and uh, the other is authenticate, where you actually perform your business logic. So uh, in this case, uh, I was using some uh, pin code then uh, telephone number authentication. So uh, in applies, I checked uh, if these fields are in in headers in request and uh, in authenticate, uh, I just checked if there is user uh, with these uh, values in some fields. If, uh, if there was such a user, I return object of the user. Otherwise, I throw exception and uh, it automatically, this exception automatically generates a correct symphony return object, resp response object. Mm. Drupal 8 has uh, also uh, ability to produce some JSON outputs directly from views, but uh, until uh, yesterday it wasn't possible to set any authentication provider for access, so uh, your resources were freely available. It, uh, there was quick fix for this. Uh, you can use a uh, subscriber, but uh, yesterday there was a uh, review and tested by community uh, patch, so you can now select authentication and uh, specify also uh, some other parameters for this authentication provider. Uh, the last of my point is uh, is of adoption, and I think uh, this basically uh, aggregation of all previous. Because if you are missing one, 
uh, you can't be successful. If you're if you don't have documentation for your API, people won't be using because they uh, don't know uh, what resources are available. If you don't have uh, secure, uh, they won't be transferring some secure data through it. Uh, so basically, everything from uh, the previous is must. Mm. Now let's get uh, finally to the coupling options in uh, Drupal 8. As I say, said, uh, REST is finally in core. Uh, basically every content entity, and I think also every configuration entity, is available uh, on via this core service, uh, this core REST modules, and there is also this views uh, REST for matter. Uh, so you can output data directly from views, your custom listings or uh, filtering with uh, everything uh, from views in uh, JSON, HAL JSON, and XML. And there are two other modules. Uh, one is relaxed, and the other is services module. Uh, if you are uh, interested in comparing these three modules, uh, there was a blog by Dries written some time after uh, DrupalCon New Orleans, and uh, he compared uh, what these modules can do, what can't do, and uh, for the rest, he also summarized uh, known issues. Uh, in his blog, he also mentioned uh, some, uh, some other ways uh, how you can get uh, data from your uh, Drupal. The first is uh, GraphQL. Uh, uh, which uh, Sebastian talked in the morning, and uh, the other is JSON API. Uh, mm, the pros of these modules are that uh, you can get a whole tree of properties. Uh, so, with traditional REST approach, you get just uh, your one uh, resource. So, if you are asking for node, you will just get this node. And uh, with uh, GraphQL, you can easily get um, also attributes of, for example, uh, node authors. I think uh, we are currently uh, with the coupling on uh, Crossroad, uh, when we have to decide if we are going uh, building a desktop first. Uh, Drupal or API first. Uh, basically, difference between these two are uh, that uh, with desktop first, uh, we basically don't have to pay much attention uh, to REST. We should develop just core and uh, have GraphQL and uh, JSON API only as uh, country modules. Uh, if we decided to go uh, as API first, this means that uh, a lot of people will be using our APIs, like, uh, mm, for example, uh, I don't know if you know uh, Spryker as a commerce solution. Uh, they are fully decoupled, they have separated backend and frontend, and uh, you can easily swap uh, backend and frontend for your custom. So, if we want to go this way, we need to more focus on developing this uh, API, integrating GraphQL and JSON API into REST, uh, into the core. Uh, thank you for your attention, and uh, thank also to our sponsors. Any questions? Okay. Thank you.